Hi everybody, welcome. I'm Sophie Jane Hardy. I'm the Communications Director at Red School and I'm delighted today to be here with Kate Shepherd cohen who graduated from our Menstruality Leadership Programme in 2017 and we're going to talk today a little bit about the programme and Kate's experience. So I'll introduce Kate first. She's the founder of an organisation called Menstrual Cycle Support, which includes the world's first non-clinical menstrual health service available through the GP surgery on social prescription, which is absolutely incredible. She recently did a brilliant TED talk, which you might like to explore. Um, Kate, I would love to dive in and ask, what made you decide to say yes to doing the Menstruality Leadership Programme with Red School? Um, I, it just landed with me at exactly the, the right time, I think. I, I, um, I had been on a, on, a, on a journey of exploring my menstrual cycle when I first realised that it was just playing such havoc with my life. Um, I kind of got to the point where I'd been offered um, uh, antidepressants and I was looking into treatment options um, for something that uh, I, I suppose it was more of a self-diagnosis of premenstrual dysphoric disorder, um, which is this, it, it's a horrendous state of being where for two weeks of the month um, in that luteal phase from about day 16, just, it's like hell. And it's like being a, a tornado and just taking everything out with you. Don't, didn't know what I was saying, what I was doing. And I just sort of, once I'd named it, or named it in fact that it was part of my menstrual cycle, which was a huge realization in itself. And seeing the treatment op options available, um, I, I was very open at that point. And I went to a festival down here in Cornwall and I came across and the most magnificent teacher called Mandy Adams, who I think had completed one of the first uh, menstruality leadership programs, perhaps even the first one. And she was offering a workshop now, I had two very small children. I didn't get to stay for her workshop. I just popped my head in and the kids were crying. But I just, I, I caught a glimmer of it, of the seasons of menstrual cycle awareness. And it gave me such hope. And I actually went to a further workshop with her um, and she inspired me so much. And it just came and it just landed with me. And when I just explored a little bit more and discovered Alexandra's work, um, and the women's quest as it was then um, and Shani's work I just knew deep in my soul that I had to do this I, ha I had to just discover more this just seemed to me just to open up a completely new treatment which for me it was a looking for a treatment um, path at that time a medicine that um, would support me so much. And so, so that was, it was, a, it just deeply resonated with me. And I love the fact that straight away on the, um, on the application form back then, I, I don't know if it still says this, I'm sure it probably does. Um, you know, cause I felt the imposter syndrome then. I was like, well, you know, I'm not, a, I'm not a yoga teacher. I'm, I haven't done any work in well being or health. I don't have you know, any medical background. Um, is this really for me? And one of the things it says is, um, you know, we're interested interested in hearing from you even if it's just because you've you've heard a voice inside that just says yes and so that really spoke to me because that was it I had a voice inside that said 100% yes it's interesting that happens so regularly that people say I'm not even quite sure why I'm here to be honest I just felt this stirring in me when I saw xyz yeah it happens really often mm. um how did the program change your experience of your cycle? I mean, as I've explained, I was in a pretty bad way, really, with my cycle. Um, really, you know, not in a not in a good place with it at all. But open to becoming, you know, open to go on the journey to come into a more positive relationship with it. Um, I will, you know, looking back, I think I was experiencing a lot of trauma through the cycle that was trying to to bubble up, but wasn't didn't have a safe place to do to do so. Mm -hmm. And so um, hearing the information, first of all, um, gave me that I mean, you know, the cycle work as Alexandra and Shani teacher, it just gave me that safe holding 
to experience my trauma. And so I started, you know, just that kind of penny drop moment of, of the seasons of the cycle, um, of thinking of reframing the cycle as something that is positive and actually something to embrace and that it's your friends. It completely changed not only my... I mean, it completely changed my worldview. I mean, it, it completely revolutionized every way I think about pretty much everything <laughs> um, from my body, uh, my mental health, how I um, uh, operate in life, um, how I access my creativity, how I can be with my children and my partner and my family. It was a completely new worldview. Um, and so it was completely life changing. And I would say, too, is that sitting in the circle, um, that part, I'd, I'd never, you know, I'd never sat in circle with women, apart from the small workshop I had done with the fantastic Mandy Adams um, down here in Cornwall. Um, I never really sat in a circle, so I was really aware that I was sitting in this circle. I, I had no expectations of it. I never really engaged with myself as a woman. Um, and, you know, lots of the, the incredible women who I did the leadership program with, um, they had, you know, they had done that before. They were speaking about chakras and yoga nidra. And I remember just being like, what's that? What's that? What's that? It was so new to me, but it was so powerful. Oh my goodness, that connection with, with um, the fellow um, the fellows on the leadership program was so extraordinary and life affirming in itself. Uh, and I still would say that, that, that all of those um, on that program, uh, I would consider sort of friends for life. A, a deeper a deeper bond happened in that time that we spent together as we explored our own cycles. Mm. so that vision for the program is that each person arrives exactly where they're at with the cycle that they've got and that the program supports them to to access their unique form of leadership their way of expressing their wild power or their calling and sometimes that looks like working with people with menstrual cycles sometimes it looks like bringing the wisdom that you've learned into uh, your field of work. I don't know if you can hear, but there's some magpies having a fight outside my window. So. <laughs> we'll just bring them into the conversation. <laughs> um, and I'd, I'd love to hear from you, Kate, how you feel the program activated your leadership or inspired you or helped you to live, live into your calling. Yeah, I mean, that's a, oh, that's a, a big question. And I'm and we did a whole podcast episode about it as well yeah, so we can I know, I know. <laughs> it's a big question and it's a good question to be asking I think all the time because that's what keeps the calling alive and true and authentic is this question um how can I best serve the world and and I think that kind of plays in here you know I think that first and foremost you know, the, the, then it was called the apprenticeship, and I and I I, I enjoyed um, and and ultimately what it's done is from this apprenticeship, which is as as Alexandra and Shani said at the time was, you know, this is an apprenticeship to yourself. But of course, what happens in sort of becoming an apprentice to yourself in your own body, there's a there becomes this calling to take this work out when you're living it. You're living it every single, I mean, every single second of every single day. Then it comes out then in, in everything you do. As I said, it, ch it changes the worldview. And so, you you know, you instantly, I think when you're working from such a place of authenticity, I think that, that you become a natural leader in whichever field you, you come from. And, and even if you, you're working in a field and you're simply do practicing mental cycle awareness for yourself, it, it informs your leadership. Um, for me, because it was so revolutionary um, and because it had it changed, you know, my that, as I said, I was experiencing hell for two weeks of the month to changing. And in fact, I've, I've written a blog post on the Red School for this. You know, actually, it still amazes me that the autumn now is my favorite time in the cycle. This is so transformative. Um, to to name things like the void so when I have that I'm not quite computing rather than being confused about that just sort of sliding into that space um, it's, it's, it's so magnificent so, so transformative for me that I felt 
um, compelled to take that out and, and share it with others. Um, so it's affected my leadership because I've taken ownership of my cycle at home. So I feel like I'm a better leader in my in myself, in my home, um, how we operate as a family, how I operate as a parent. But then for me, I've taken it and I felt like, OK, I really want to share this work. How can I share this work in a way that then is authentic to me and my expression? Um, so, yeah, I think that having, again, the circle of um, others who were on the program, it was almost like this wonderful foundational support along with the teachings and the facilitation from Shani Alexandra, these wonderful foundations to um, become a leader in, for myself and then take it out and have the confidence to take it out into the world and even into the, you know, the NHS and actually feel inspired to actually change menstrual health care for the better to change the experience of others who are in that dark dark place of suffering and alleviate it for them and if you'd like to hear more about the work that Kate's doing we recorded a podcast episode all about it so I'll drop the link underneath wherever wherever we've posted this so that you can check out Kate's work it's absolutely beautiful Kate how would you describe uh, Alexandra and Shani and the way that they teach this work um it, it's you know it's almost difficult to put into words because I almost just can just sense them I can just sense them here they're their presence in fact their presence is is always with me and helping me and guiding me um you know I really felt that hearing them both speak I felt a truth that I'd, I'd never encountered before, you know, having gone through the education system, um, through, I went to university and studying intellectual history and cultural expression, and I'd never found anything that really spoke to me and my experience. And that's what they have done, and that's, that's what they do. They, they just speak to, from the heart, from the soul to the heart and to the soul. And they do it in such a um, brilliant way because they're just so brilliant with words and are articulating this experience for the first time. You know, they've gifted us this, this new language um, of, of how we express and experience life. It just resonates so profoundly. And they're just so, they're so kind and they're so gracious. I remember the first time that I met them, I'd just written an article for the Huffington Post and I'd taken the um, little snippets that I'd taken from Mandy Adams's workshop, which of course at the time I didn't realise, in fact, um, although I remember them, her, her talking about her teachers, I hadn't quite realised that it had come from the Red School. Um, but I'd written this article and I felt like I had to say to Alexandra and Shani, I, I called them over and I, I was very apologetic and I said you know I've written this article I hope that's okay that I've written about it and they were like well you menstruate don't you <laughs> you you know you 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 give yourself permission to speak about this and just the the, the beautiful act of collaboration um I take that with me everywhere I go because it's very easy to feel um particularly as the menstrual cycle um, the taboo is breaking and the global menstrual movement is spreading. The menstruality has, has become a movement in itself, which is incredibly exciting. Um, it's very easy actually to slip into a kind of, uh, I, I notice it in myself, a sort of a co competitive nature. Oh, oh, hang on, she's doing that. And I always think about Alexandra and Shani, and what, they, what they said to us at the beginning of the leadership program. You know, if somebody is doing something, you think, wow, I like that out there and do it and do it in your own way I just never I'd never experienced that before I'd never experienced this way of kind of supporting us all as as um as as menstruators you know bringing each other up I love that that's leadership in itself and it's so profound and oh my goodness I could say so much more um about this their, their style of teaching um but uh, I, I've, I've felt their support every step of the way. 
you know, when I was bubbling, trauma was bubbling up to when I was first talking to them about trying to take the work into the NHS. And I felt that their hand has been holding me and they've had my back. And it's just a wonderful way. I mean, goodness me, what, what teachers, how inspirational. Thank you. Is there anything else you'd love to share about the Menstruality Leadership Programme, about your experience? Um, hmm. I think it's interesting, the, the format of being online, because I've been um, uh, lucky enough, privileged enough to, um, to take the Menstruality Menstrual Medicine Circle, sorry, the MMC training, which of course was online. Now, when I did my leadership programme, this was before COVID, so we did it face to face. Um, and I was a little bit um, nervous, a bit dubious about having that online experience, just because it had been so incredible having this week away. Um, but the power of the teaching is such that it translates online. The power of the work is such that the bonds is felt online and to have people working, speaking to people who are coming, you know, calling in from India and Australia and South Africa, um, as well as down the road is um, quite something in itself. So I was really interested and fascinated to see how, how this work can also um, succeed on an online platform. I guess there's something else I want to say too, something I'm really interested in, I think coming from quite an intellectual and academic background, or feeling myself into a more intellectual and academic um, way of thinking, is that um, I love philosophy, I studied ethics and philosophy, and I feel that the Red School philosophy, the philosophies of Alexandra and Sharni, are not like any other that I've read they, they include some parts of some of the, um, the, the, the philosophy, of course, predominantly written by men, um, but it stands out and it, it, it runs deep. And actually, I feel like we're part of a wave that is going to be explored for generations and generations to come. It's really exciting to be part of that at any stage. Um, uh, you know, to be part of, an, of this profound philosophy that is coming out of the Red School in terms of cyclical living, in terms of menstrual rest, in terms of the void, um, and seeing how that manifests, actually practically speaking, in the lives of those who've actually gone through the programme. It's just incredible to see how it's now coming out in the form of the movement um, in all of the different fields. So I suppose I just wanted to add that, that there's um, how the, the, the depth of the work um, and how it's touching so many different people and um, the gratitude that I have that it's, um, that it's in, in my life. Thank you, Kate. I really appreciate everything that you've shared. You've shared so generously and I want to congratulate you again for the incredible work that you're bringing into the world. Um, yeah, thank you for being with us. And for anyone listening who would like to explore the Menstruality Leadership Programme, you can go to menstrualityleadership.com.